folks, do you remember back in the 90s when Garth Brooks seemed to have a concert special every year? This is Garth Brooks. This is Garth Brooks too. Ireland and back and live in Central Park. This. This was my childhood in a nutshell. And with Garth's new album, Time Traveler, coming out. Uh, correction, it's already out. Yeah, this video was supposed to be out a long time ago. I figured now was as good a time as ever to take a little nostalgic trip back in time. I decided to digitalize my VHS copies of the original broadcast for this video. I don't know, it just feels more authentic, you know? And I'm only going to be covering the main concert specials from the 90s. Yes, I know there's trying to rope the world, double live, but the main four concerts are the one I watched the most growing up, and they're the ones I have the most memories of. For the first stop on our journey, we have to go all the way back to the night of January 17th, 1992. A little later. Still later. All right, here we go. Garth's first special, This Is Garth Brooks, aired on NBC, and about 18 million viewers tuned in to see what all the fuss was about, but maybe more importantly, answer the question, what the heck's a Garth Brooks? Huh? And within the first minute, we not only knew what a Garth Brooks was, but we also knew what we were in for, and all Garth had to say about it was, welcome to the 90s. And this was the perfect way for Garth to let people know in under a minute, hey, this is what we do. If you want to take the ride, welcome aboard. A couple months prior to this, my dad saw Garth perform Shameless on the CMA Awards, and he was blown away by that performance. Even to this day, my dad says Garth still hasn't topped that performance of Shameless. So when this concert special came around, he recorded it, and we watched it the next morning. This was the moment I retired my Raffi albums. I played this thing so much back then, it's a miracle it still plays as well as it does. This guy is smashing guitars and swinging right off the stage, Raffi never did that. And this guy has such an intense look on his face the whole time. I remember before I learned Garth's name, whenever I wanted to watch this, I'd ask my dad, hey, can I watch the mad guy? <laughs> the concert was filmed during his two concerts at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas in September of 1991 and received both VHS and Laserdisc releases, as well as a DVD release in 2006. And there's a few notable differences between the broadcast, VHS, and DVD. For starters, the broadcast is missing a number of songs, obviously because time had to be cut down for it to fit into a one hour block. Also, the broadcast opened up with Garth explaining just what a Garth Brooks is before the concert starts, but on the VHS and Laserdisc, it goes straight into the concert, giving this slow, extended build up to Garth's entrance on the stage. However, this intro was reinstated for the 2006 DVD. Also, something the broadcast has that no release has is this closing statement from Garth before the credits roll, and also these commercial bumpers. Hey, hey, you weren't going nowhere, were you? You better come back. Come back. Oh, you're still here? <laughs> Now for the DVD release in 2006, an odd choice in my opinion was made for the sake of unnecessary bonus features. The songs What She's Doing Now and Keep Your Hands to Yourself, well they were cut for the main program for the sake of bonus songs. Whereas VHS and Laserdiscs, they're just part of the program. I don't get it. And they also cut Garth's monologue before they played We Bury the Hatchet, which also seems unnecessary. The song go, We Bury the Hatchet, but leave the handles sticking out. But another absence in this DVD and the entire box set is that all segments of Garth's then wife Sandy were cut. And I'm guessing that was at her personal request. So I get it. But as wild as this concert was, nothing prepared me for what 1994 had in store. Spring had come and commercials for a new Garth special started rolling in. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A stage engulfed in flames, Garth flying in the air, this was gonna be freaking insane. Well, the night came, I have this tape loaded in the VCR, ready to hit record. Seven o'clock rolls around, I hit record and click, click, nothing. Mom, it's not working. And the show starts, Garth appears on screen and I am freaking out. Ah, it's on. Well, ah, what do I do? <laughs> we discovered that the record tab was taken out of the tape so that me as a kid didn't accidentally record over his precious Garth recording. So my mom runs in real quick with a roll of scotch tape, tapes over the tab, voila, it's recording. I learned a very valuable lesson about recording on VHS tapes that night. In fact, all these years later, that same piece of scotch tape that saved the day is still on this thing. The only caveat was I still hadn't seen the start of the broadcast. This is where my tape started. And for most of my life, I've wondered, what did I miss? I gotta know. Hi, I'm Garth Brooks. Um, what? This <laughs> no, is just right the first one again. Saying, What's a Garth Brooks? Well, he's a guy. Wait, what? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> We're back. Yep. I waited 29 years to see that. And it starts off with a literal bang, only to be extremely anticlimactic. And of all the concerts you've ever seen, this is one of them. Yeah, this, this is one of them. This certainly wouldn't be one of the craziest ones or anything. Because it was. Certainly for six-year-old me. Future me. So I was just editing the video and I noticed I completely forgot to wear one of these. So allow me to remedy that right now. And I also forgot to talk about a bunch of stuff. This video was going well. Just a funny detail of this kind of jarring rough cut of Garth right before he explodes in the beginning. Seamless. Absolutely seamless. Also, this mannequin is just, it's kind of hilarious. Anyway, I'm sure this isn't the first time I'll interrupt the video, but um, yeah, let's continue. Come on, along with a stage engulfed in flames and a rainstorm, this man flew over the crowd of 65,000 people just to say hi to people in those nosebleeds. And the nosebleed seats are up there. I remember as a kid acting out this concert in the living room, and my brother would actually lift me up so I could fly along with the show, and he'd even flip me upside down at the appropriate spot. Wish I had a camcorder back then, or at least some pictures. Just fun memories. Now for the broadcast, there was some behind the scenes footage, and in that footage, Garth reads off a fact sheet that tells what all went into this production to pull it off. A crew of over 600 people. There's gonna be over 40,000 man hours. We got three and a half miles of heavy gauge chain, 5,000 sheets of plywood. You're looking at 16,000 gallons of diesel fuel, 50 miles of electric cable, 60,000 amps a night, 7.5 million watts. It can power 36,000 homes for a full month. Over 600 crew members constantly going. 24 hours a day for 13 days. Gee, surely nothing, and I mean nothing could go wrong, right? Well, one week before the show, a main support collapsed under the weight of lights, fog machines, and speakers, injuring nine crew members. Fortunately, no one was critically injured, and miraculously, the shows went on as scheduled. Three sold-out shows, plus one free show in September of 1993, and everything from there was smooth sailing, right? No. During Garth's double live special, he tells a story where the fire effect failed. So I'm sitting out there getting ready, and here comes the big moment. Bam! Nothing. Uh, and I'm looking, 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 and I'm sitting over there, and I see the guy that's running the fire, and he's just sitting there going. <laughs> so at a break of the show, I walk over there. <laughs> We're standing on the pipe that has the fire coming out. <laughs> And that's not the only thing to go wrong. I don't have a recording of it, but an old CMT special tells the story of a water line for the rainstorm breaking during the thunder rolls during one of the shows, and an entire section of the stadium was drenched. I remember them showing a clip of Garth saying something like, Oh, I see you guys got some extra rain over here. Sorry about that. And a wide shot of the crowd being sprayed by the water actually wound up in the special. The special was announced for release in 96 by a teaser trailer shown on the Video Collection Volume 2 VHS, a release that never came to be. Now I'm kind of basing this next bit off of memory because I can't for the life of me find the article I was reading. So this next part might not be 100% accurate, but a company named Earthquake Edit put the show together in a very fast paced MTV style. And apparently Garth wasn't happy with the edit, which halted the video release. But after seeing Michael Solomon's editing work on the Ireland and Back special, Garth recruited him to completely re-edit the visuals for the Texas Stadium show. Hopefully I didn't screw that up. I think that's how it went down. And this concert wouldn't receive a home video release until 2006, which included the new edit plus five additional songs that weren't broadcast. I guess technically six, but I don't quite count Colin Baton Rouge, as the song is just basically the album cut with a bunch of crowd noise over it, but the footage is great. As for the new edit, it's in my opinion a much better watch than the broadcast, and since the special shot over the course of three shows, sometimes there's something completely different happening during some of the songs. But the DVD is just the concert. No exploding Garth introduction, no behind the scenes, no crew interviews, or Garth doing his best Kevin McAllister impression, which is fine. There's more music in this version. It's a little easier to watch, so you know, I'll take it. I'm back, because I forgot to mention the commercial bumpers. Riveting stuff. So for the sake of being a completist, here's those. After I find my head, we'll be right back. Jeez. Uh, this is gonna take a little longer than I thought. Why don't you guys go on without me? I'll catch up. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. But now it's time to skip ahead to March 4th, 1998, when NBC aired the next special, 
Ireland and back. The first hour and a half was coverage of the three nights Garth played in Croke Park in Dublin, Ireland in May of 1997, and the last half hour was a performance from Hollywood, California, playing songs from Garth's new album, Sevens. And much like the last time I recorded a Garth special, I had another little heart attack with this one. We recorded the special just fine, but then a few days later, I grabbed the tape to watch it again, started playing it, and it was recorded over. And then I freaked out! I was pissed because I remember recording over it with something that we did not give two craps about. I asked people at school, hey, did anybody record the Garth concert the other night so I can dub your tape? And nobody did. Thanks, losers. Well, weeks go by and something else came up that we wanted to record. So I put in a tape that I thought was safe to record on, checked it out, and there it was. My Garth recording. Turns out I had just labeled the wrong tape. Crisis averted once again and I enjoyed it for years to come. The first home video release for this special was exclusive to Ireland and it came bundled with the double live CD and to the best of my knowledge it had no edits compared to the broadcast on NBC but in America we'd have to wait until 2006 for I think you know for this thing and much like the very first special this is Garth Brooks anything that had Sandy in it was cut out so the DVD is missing some behind the scenes footage and Garth introducing her to the crowd during the show. Again, I'm sure there's good personal reasons, so no complaints from me on this. And so you'll know, just for the record, I, I didn't well up, I didn't cry because Sandy was crying. I, I cried because she got a bigger response than I did when I came the DVD was also renamed Live in Dublin instead of Ireland and Back like it was in the broadcast. And only two out of the five songs from the Hollywood segment were included as bonus features. But fortunately, the only thing missing from the Dublin segment is all of Sandy's parts. The Dublin section remains intact and includes all the songs from the broadcast. Me again. So the broadcast starts off with this very dramatic introduction that's not on the DVD, which is fine because it would really only fit well on the original Ireland and Back program because it ends with... First, Garth invades the Emerald Isle with a once-in-a-lifetime performance from Dublin. And then we're coming back to America where it's really wild, so stick around! And then throughout the special before commercial breaks, Garth teases a performance in the States where they'll do songs from his album Sevens. Was this worth interrupting the video again? You decide, I don't know. All right, our final stop on this journey is the night of August 7th, 1997, when Garth played a free show to hundreds of thousands of people in Central Park, and also 14 million viewers as it broadcasted live on HBO. And I remember wanting to go to this concert so bad. All I knew was a free show, so as a kid, I just thought, hey, it's we can afford free, right? And my folks who were much smarter than me were like New York City, uh, no. And we didn't have HBO, so I'd have to wait for the VHS release. I lived and breathed this tape in the summer of 1998. <laughs> the poor kid that lived on the street from me. Well, I'd ride my bike to his house every time I'd bring this tape with and force him to live and breathe it too. Yeah, I was, I was that kid. Oh man, if he's watching this, let me just say I'm sorry for that. No wonder he hasn't said a word to me in 25 years. <laughs> I remember I used to hold my old Fisher Price cassette recorder up to the TV and record cassettes of the shows. My dad always reminds me of how he wished he had video recorded me mowing the lawn as I'd be blasting the shows through my headphones while on the riding mower. And I vividly remember screaming along to this part. Yeah, I was a... I was a special child. By the way, I'm cheating here a little bit. I said I'd be using clips exclusively from the broadcast, but what I should have said was I'd be using the versions closest to what I grew up with, because this footage is from the same VHS tape that I've had all these years, crushed box and all. It actually wasn't until recently that I actually got a copy of the broadcast in very bad quality at that. But it's cool because before the show, it shows some footage from rehearsals and people heading into the park before the show. And something I found really interesting about the broadcast is the camera angles were re-edited to be a little more action-packed and here all this time I just assumed that VHS was just what was captured live and while I'm not surprised to discover they polished up the angles for the video release what I don't get is they took the time to add in new camera angles yet the sound mix isn't polished for instance Jimmy Mattingly's fiddle being inaudible during the first half of Colin Baton Rouge or Billy Joel's vocals being too quiet during Ain't Going Down. And also, there's a spot where the sound only comes out of the right speaker during the dance. All these issues were fixed though for, you know, this thing that you've seen a million times. However, the DVD is unfortunately missing about 35 minutes of the concert. Otherwise, it would certainly be the definitive way to experience the show now. 
I missed you. So I didn't actually forget this one. I had it scripted, but I couldn't find the tape with this footage. But at the last minute, I found it. And it's a segment from Good Morning America in 2005, where Garth visits Central Park's North Meadow and reminisces about that night. Me and James Garver set out on this tee overlooking and during the solos, just talk like me and you are right now. People, as far as you can see, it was a perfect night from God. I mean, the weather couldn't have been better. The crowd could not have been better. Really cool. Honestly, it gives me chills hearing him talk about that night. I don't know how I would handle looking up at that crowd for the first time. Uh, but all right, let's finish things up. These old concerts from the 90s really sculpted my love for music and live concerts. And for all the Weird Al fans who are watching, Garth actually played a small role into me becoming such a Weird Al fan. During both the Dublin and Central Park specials, he does an acoustic rendition of American Pie. Even had Don McLean on stage with him in Central Park. And a friend of mine was really into Al at the time. So when Running With Scissors came out in 1999, well, he had it on cassette and, well, you know exactly what song grabbed me on that album. So actually, Al came in at just the right time in my life. My first Al concert was in October of 2000, and after that, I was hooked for life. So you see, it's all connected. What am I doing that for? But yeah, thanks for going down this nostalgic trip down memory lane with me and listening to me ramble about the differences between each release. And if you'd like to hear even more rambling from me about Chris Gaines, I got you covered. But that's all I have for you this time. Like and subscribe, all the things. I don't know where the bodies are. Garth isn't here to give the family's closure. Team Band Sniper Wolf go hard, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm sitting here asking myself, was it worth shaving this off for a five second green screen portion in a video that nobody's gonna watch? I'm not feeling too good about it right now. It'll be back next video.